Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video we're going to be introducing you to the new X lookup function available to us in uh, Microsoft Excel, predominantly uh, Office 365, uh, 365 version of uh, uh, Excel and obviously what the real benefits are of using this function and obviously at the end of the video you can come to the conclusion whether you think you'll start actually using X lookup more than VLOOKUP because it does have some really key uh, benefits, uh, or I'm sorry, say improvements over the VLOOKUP formula. So as all of our videos, we've got a uh, sort of a working uh, demonstration that we'll go through, sort of like a real world example of how you can use this formula. And yeah, there's probably not much else to say rather than just jumping in. So like we said, the XLOOKUP works in the same way as the VLOOKUP, apart from it's in some ways simpler and it has a lot more flexibility uh, when it comes to using the function. Uh, so the scenario we're going to use here is you can see we've got a list of names um, down the side here. So we've got Daniel, Cody, so on and so forth. So we've got seven names. We can see what their yearly salary is. Uh, and we're going to be using the X lookup uh, formula to or function to populate the uh, department, current department, and the bonus percentage. So this information is stored in our second tab over here called the data sheet. And you can see we've got a, a full list of employee data. Uh, and we've also got uh, some bonus information there as well. Uh, worth pointing out as well, so that yeah, the three main fields we've got here is obviously the individual's name, the department in which they're working, uh, and so we've got like various departments from a business, so you can see we've got everywhere from human resources through to sales, and each individual and their department is in date order from oldest to newest. And in addition to that, you can see under the bonus scheme, uh, we've got some bands of salary, so uh, we go 10, 25, 50, 75,000, and then we've got 100 and 125,000 there as well. And depending on the person's salary, this is what determines what bonus they will be getting. So obviously if they've got, well, as, as it stems in this example, the higher the salary, the higher the bonus percentage they're going to get. Uh, and it's worth noticing, or not noticing, but noting, because all this data uh, obviously has got some names, and you'll see some salary information here. Of course, this is all randomly generated information that I've just done. Uh, just basically by randomly <laughs> entering information uh, into the Excel spreadsheet. Um, hopefully that's a given and be obvious, but just want to make that statement there. So yeah, all of this is completely random data. So should you see your name in, in that column A, it is a completely um, coincidental, uh, with a very small likelihood of actually in the case, but yeah, yeah point, point made. So this is the data sheet where we're going to be sourcing our data from. So what we'll do, let's say further delay, let's just jump straight in and look at how to use the function. So the first thing we want to do is populate the department. So in order to do so, all we need to do is, as we would with VLOOKUP, start typing, but we're going to this time put X lookup and open brackets. So the first thing we need to do is so lookup value. So that's going to be our name. So we need to do select A5 in my example here, comma. We're then going to go to our data tab. Uh, as you who are very familiar with VLOOK will know, we would now then go and select the full uh, array or range of our data, making sure that the lookup um, value and the return value was all in that same range. We don't need to worry about that now. All we want to do is, having put our lookup value, the next thing to do is enter in our lookup array. So this is where we want to look for our lookup value. All I'm going to do is select all these names in here, just do a uh, control shift and down. And I was going to do F4 as well, just to make sure that that range is locked because we'll be dragging this formula down. So that's our lookup array populated. And the second part is, or the third part, should I say, is the return array. So what piece of information do we want to return? Well, for us, that is just going to be the department. So again, I'm just going to select all of the department, like so. Hit F4 again, just to make sure it's locked. Uh, close brackets because that's all we need. Now we've got three other pieces of information we could add there, but they're all optional. We don't actually need to add them. So close brackets, and that is it. That is the entirety of the formula we need for X lookup. So we've got three parts. The first part is what value do you want to look for? The second part is the range you want to look for that value. And then the third part is the range uh, containing the value you wish to return. And I've just noticed there's a little error here. It's got the sheet name twice, so it's going to remove that out of there. So do excuse that. And then once you hit enter, you can see we've got a value returned. So we can now copy this down. Uh, and this is why I lock these ranges to make sure that they're going to be fixed. And just copy this information down. And we can see, there we go, we've got the department um, for all those individuals. Uh, so that all works really well. 
One thing to know, uh, you wouldn't have noticed this probably uh, off the bat, but I know this from looking at the data. We know that Daniel Brook, uh, his actual, his current department is no longer sales. Uh, if I was going to the data sheet and I go and search for Daniel, or, or Brook Daniel, sorry, got the wrong way around. We can see that his original team was, or department was sales, but he actually moved into technology uh, in September of 2019. So uh, a little less than a year after he originally started in the sales team. So obviously this is not the information we ideally want. We don't want just the department. Uh, we want that, so I'm, I'm mixing the two together. So first in column C, we can see we've got the department that first gets pulled through to us, but actually we want what their current department is. So we know it's not sales, his current department is actually, uh, I believe it was technology, wasn't it? It was, go Brook. Daniel Brook, yeah, so it is technology here. So what we want to see is actually, we don't want the sales, we want technology. So this is what we're gonna pull it through here. And this will allow us to see if there is any other circumstances in our data where someone is or, or has changed their department in which they're working. So previously when we were looking, we would be using VLOOKUP. Now I'm doing a lot of comparisons between the two, but hopefully it's beneficial to, for you to see what the true benefit is. With VLOOKUP, you know we would just be very much stuck with, okay, VLOOKUP will just return that first value that it comes across in a list. The benefit with XLOOKUP is we're able to actually uh, enforce what way the information is gonna pull from. So rather than going straight from uh, the first value that comes across, starting at the top, we can actually have it look for the first value it comes across, but starting from the bottom of a range. Uh, and all we need to do for that is just enter exactly the same formula we've got here. And just to save time, I will literally just copy this out, but you can type it back in there again if you so desire. Go enter. And I'm just gonna click, remove that last bracket at the moment. And we can see at the moment, we've got obviously our three uh, options we can use at the end here. So the first one we have is if not found, so this gives us the ability to uh, define what happens if the uh, function is unable to find your value. And the second part here is obviously the match mode. So how do we want to match? Do we want to do an exact match or do we want to do one of these other options? And we'll be coming onto this section um, when we look at populating the bonus. So I won't touch on it too much now. So what we're gonna do is do another comma to get across to this search mode. So this allows us to have obviously the flexibility I mentioned. So by default, we'll have the search first to last, and that's obviously the one you see highlighted here with the number one. And that's the option that VLOOKUP will always be using. But we want to use this search last to first. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned, <laughs> but the data we have in that data sheet is ordered from the oldest to the newest date. So obviously if we want to find the first date, we can search first to last. But in our scenario, because we want to find the last date, or so the most recent date, we can search last to first. So all we need to do is click this option here, or you can just type in the minus one, whatever's easiest, close your brackets, hit enter, and then you can see we've now got that last value for um, Brooke. So we can now see that he, or they were originally in sales, and they're now in the technology department. And if I just copy that down, for the majority of our other uh, individuals, if they are all the same department, but we can actually now see that Marcus was also a similar scenario where he was originally in human resources, but his actual current latest department is finance. So we kind of covered off two here. So the first benefit of using XLOOKUP is obviously it's a lot simpler to use and it also allows us to uh, have flexibility from where we pull the data. So as you notice with these ranges and apologies for not touching this at the time, but obviously all we had to do is reference where the names were and then reference where the value to return is. And unlike VLOOKUP, it doesn't matter if this return column or return array is to the left, to the right, or miles away from obviously the, the, the lookup array, uh, it just doesn't matter. So we have that more flexibility to benefit over the VLOOKUP there. The second one obviously is this current department. Okay, as we mentioned, the flexibility we have here is we're now able to search in multiple directions rather than going from uh, top to bottom, we can go bottom to top. And there's a couple of other options there available as well, but we're not gonna to touch on in this video. We may need to do another one in the future where it comes to using those other options for the search type. But the last one we're gonna be looking at is bonus. So how we can uh, obviously pull through the bonus relevant to the salary for each of these individuals. So once again, we're gonna enter XLOOKUP and open our brackets. 
we'll go to our name. Uh, no, not this name this time. We want to go to the salary because we're going to look for this salary in our bonus table. Do our comma. Let's go into our data. And it might help if I removed the filtering. So obviously we're going to cause some errors here. So let's just remove the filters there so we can see everything. Perfect. So once again, X lookup. Take the name, comma, go with our data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to look for our salary. So, ah, and I've just done that again. What a mess. So third time lucky. Here we go. Equals uh, X lookup. And we want to look up the yearly salary, so B5. We then want to look for that salary in this first salary column of our bonus scheme. So we're just going to select all those values there. And I hit F4 to lock that range. Uh, the value or the return array, so what contains the, the value which return is this bonus column. So we just can select those again and once more hit F4. Uh, we'll do a comma. Obviously, get to the if not found, we'll leave that blank. Uh, we'll leave the match mode uh, up, so it's the match mode we now want to use. So what we have here is, by default, if you don't enter the match mode, it just does defaults to zero and does an exact match. So it's only going to find or return a, a value that is an exact match to your uh, lookup value. Um, in this scenario, because obviously we're dealing with salaries, and obviously our salary could be higher or lower than each one of these brackets. So looking at 100,000, you can see just below the box here, the salary might be, say, uh, 101,000. Uh, in that scenario, we want it to go back to the 100,000 threshold. So obviously, if it's less than 125,000, we want it to go to 10% bonus. If it was 125,000 or over, then it would go to 12%. So in order to do that, we have two options. We can either go exact match, uh, so it's going to find an exact salary match, or the next smaller item. So obviously it's going to go back to the salary. If it can't find our salary exactly, it's going to go to the next salary in our table, or in our lookup array that is less than our salary. Or the other option we could do is, again, if there's no exact match, it will go to the next largest salary available. But for our criteria, we want to go for an exact match or next smaller. So what we do is double click that, or again, you could put minus one. Not worry about the search mode, so we can just do a close brackets here, hit enter, and we can see a value has come through. So we'll just copy that through one more time, and we can see we've now got our bonus percentages in there as well. Uh, so let's just quickly test a couple of these. So we've got Cody, so we've got 77045. So let's look in here, so 77045. So it's obviously between the 75 and the 100. But because we want it to be, so 77 is not pre, uh, available in our range here. So what we want to do is that 77 to revert down to the value, the next smallest, what is 75 to return 8%. So we can see, yep, that has done exactly that. We've got a 10% one here. So we've got 100,945. So obviously that's just, just short, well, 945 over our 1,000 pound limit. So 1,000, 100,000 here is 10%, but obviously they're more than 100,000, but they're not quite 125. Therefore, we wanted to revert that to the 10% assigned to 100,000 uh, pounds, so we say bracket. And that has done just that. So we've populated all these fields and obviously gone through a number of scenarios uh, and the different benefits of using the X lookup function. So thank you very much for watching that tutorial. Uh, we've gone through a number of scenarios of how the XLOOKUP formula is uh, more beneficial and maybe easier to use, shall we say, than uh, the VLOOKUP function. Uh, appreciate it because we've been through quite a lot there. If you do have any questions, please do drop a comment below this video and I will get back in contact with you or respond to that comment uh, as soon as I can. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. Uh, not only is it greatly appreciated by myself because it shows me the sort of content you'd like to see a lot more of, but also helps with that YouTube algorithm to help get this channel and this the content out to as many people as possible. And lastly, if you're new to the channel or if you've seen a few of our videos before, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button. Uh, obviously, it's going to help notify you of all of our future videos that do come out. So lastly, thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks.
We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out uh, and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.